Hey friends! Welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I'm doing a combination wrap-up of what I read this summer and what I read this fall. Because of my impromptu hiatus, I really haven't been talking about all the books I read, but I still want to do that, so this is going to be probably one big video. <laughs> so bear with me um, as I go through these books. I had a pretty good reading period for both of those seasons. Um, I can't tell you how many books I read overall because I, I just don't want to do the math right now, but I did read a good chunk over those like months so that's good I guess um eventually I will probably post an end of year wrap up where I post what I read like at the end of the year or whatever but I wanted to hurry up and catch up and post this video and make this video um so I could be on track and make myself feel better for missing out on um posting this earlier so, um, starting with the summer, I'm going to start with June, go to and then go up to, um, I think, October. And then, yeah. So, for June, I read 13 books. Um, I'm pretty sure from what I remember, it was a pretty good month. I pretty much enjoyed the majority of the books I was reading, which is great. Um, the first book that I read was City of Dusk by Tara Sim. I gave this four stars. I found this to be very interesting. It was a little overwhelming sometimes because you're getting like five different perspectives in this book. And so sometimes it was hard to keep track of all the information each person was getting. Um, and like remember it because then you would like switch to another POV and you'd be getting more information. So I will say it was a little overwhelming with that, but otherwise I did enjoy the story and the characters. So the story follows this city, um, the City of Dusk, and it is basically been cut off from magic and the gods that they follow for over like a hundred and something years. And within the city, they used to worship the four houses because they had a direct connection to the gods. And so those were the, the houses where the people that the gods would talk through to like the rest of the city, I guess. But when the magic got cut off, that meant the weakened, um, that weakened the houses because they couldn't directly talk to the gods anymore. And ultimately the people decided to um, put a king in place because they needed a ruler. Um, and someone to go to and stuff like that. So when we start the story, um, the houses have basically started picking their new heirs, so the next generation that's going to be taking over, and so you meet four of the um, people that you're reading from in the story, and they're trying to figure out how to save the magic, because at this point it's been so long since they've been cut off that magic is truly dwindling, and it's becoming obvious. And so they're trying, they're each in their own separate ways trying to find a way to reconnect to the gods, reconnect to magic, and all that kind of stuff. I'm definitely intrigued enough to, intrigued enough to start uh, to get the second book when it comes out next year. Um, she actually, I believe, just released the announcement for that and the cover actually looks super gorgeous. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Next, I read Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shannon McGuire. This is the second book in the Wayward Children series. I gave this five stars. I absolutely loved it. This is kind of a almost prequel. So when you read, if you've read the first book, you meet two characters, Jack and Jill. And in this book, this is kind of their origin story of how they got to the school um, and like what world they lived in and how they um, survived in that world. And it was actually really cool. I really loved Jack. If I... And, like, she's so much better than me because, honestly, if Jill was really ruining my happiness, I would have just cut her off. But instead, Jack, like, sacrificed her happiness to save her, which is wild to me. But I guess that's the whole thing of twins. I would never get it because I'm not a twin. But I really enjoyed the series. I really want to continue on. Maybe I'll make it more of a goal next year to finish the series, um, like I've been doing with Sarah J. Maas. 
but yeah that they're like a little they're short too so that's why i kind of really like them but um i really enjoy shauna mcguire's writing i like the way she writes her characters so highly highly recommend if you are interested i um made it a point to f read and finish the entire series of demon slayer um which i did i gave that series five stars it was freaking amazing i cried so hard at the end because it was just like a lot and i love those characters i don't think i've ever loved characters as much as i have in demon slayer besides fruits basket like if you know me you know like my obsession with fruits basket also sailor moon but like fruits basket and sailor moon like those are some of my favorite favorite characters um but especially fruits basket because there's just so much like you really bond psychologically with these characters throughout the story, like Toru and Kyo and Yuki. And so, like, you just, I, well, I become, became, like, attached and I just love them so much. And I cried a lot in that series as well. So with Demon Slayer, like, I really, really became attached to um, all of the characters, like Nezuko, Inosuke, um, all of them. And... I lost my mind at the end mostly because a lot of big things happened but also because it ended and the way it ended was like complete like it definitely completed the story but it just felt so final and I was like I'm not ready for these characters to be gone <laughs> like no but I just loved it so much it was so 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 good if you don't know what it's about it follows this boy um Tanjiro who lives in the time of like samurais and uh, all the kind of stuff in Japan and so in this world demons exist but only few people know that they actually exist and usually when you find out they exist they're either trying to kill you or they they've um, attacked somebody you've loved or something like that so Tanjiro lives with his family um, in the woods and I think he helps them like sell wood or something like that and so one day he has to go into town to do some like trading or something when he comes back he finds his family completely massacred besides his one sister Nezuko so he like grabs her and he's trying to go find her take her to a doctor and halfway through him trying to do that she's trying to kill him for at first and he realizes that something's different about her but then he's able to calm her down and he realizes that whatever attacked them has changed her so as this is happening, another um, person, a demon slayer, happens upon them and he also tries to kill Nezuko and Tanjiro basically protects her because he's like, this is my sister, my last time I remember, I cannot let her die. And so the demon slayer kind of sees his dedication and he sees how different Nezuko is despite the fact that she is a demon and like their connection, how like authentic it is between Tanjiro and Nezuko. So the demon slayer recommends that he goes and he joins the slayer corpse and basically trains to become a demon slayer himself in order to be able to find um, a cure for Nezuko and change her back. So he does and he goes on this long journey of just fighting demons and befriending demon slayers and learning what the core mission of the corpse is and it's really just very intense but like such a cool good story and I love the characters. You, le I liked that you got to really meet different demons. And it wasn't just like, oh, you meet a demon and you kill them. It was like, you really learned about who these demons were before they became demons. Because eventually, like, something that you realize is they were people at one point. And they just got turned. Either willingly un or unwillingly. So I just really loved that you really got to deep dive into those characters as well. And... <laughs> All right, next book I read was A Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.E. Tucker. I believe I gave this four, four stars. Um, I absolutely loved this. At first, I was very, very compu confused because when you start this story, you're as lost as the character. So the char usually, like, when you start a story, characters usually have more information. So, like, you're kind of getting, like, they're giving you the information that they know as you read. With this character, that's not the case. She doesn't know anything. She doesn't know why things are happening to her. She doesn't know why she she's been put in the place that she's been put in and you're just kind of stuck with her like learning as you go because you're like i don't know what's happening and she's like i don't know what's happening either so you're both just kind of like i don't know what's happening but i actually really enjoyed that part of the story because it was cool kind of learning the things as she learns them um it follows a girl named romira Mar romiria who is a thief and she lives in modern day new york and she runs into this like woman and the woman does some weird magic trick and transports her into i think like an alternate dimension 
or something or an alternate world um, where she is put into the body of a princess also named Mer Romeria um, and then thrown into this world without any knowledge of what to do, say, be, or anything. So she kind of has to go from there and figure out who were the people that sent her here, why did they send her here, what is here, uh, and all that kind of stuff. And it's actually um, really, really interesting. That's all I'm going to say because I don't want to say too much more and accidentally spoil something. But yeah, it's it's a wild, it's a wild time. I definitely would recommend. Though I will say I recommend reading this when the third one comes out next year because the second one did not really live up to my expectations. So maybe wait and then you can binge all three and hopefully the third one will be just as good. All right, next I read Steel Striker by Marie Lu. This is the second book in the um, Sky Hunter duology that she has written. I gave this four stars um i really enjoyed it i enjoyed the duology itself overall i thought it was a really good cool story and commentary on immigration and um experimentation and nationalism and all that kind of stuff so like this story follows a girl who basically has um like she lives in this world where this reigning like kingdom or country or whatever has come in and colonized a lot of the land um or a lot of the other countries that were surrounding it and so the girl that you meet in the story she's a refugee from one of these colonized places and she they are living in one of the last like uncolonized kingdoms cities whatever um that is still there and so she fights for or she fights in this like special security guard that, that the city kingdom has um in order to fight against this colonizing nation that's coming through she meets one of the big experiments that this conquering nation has been um creating and they form this connection and essentially this team where they can go in and fight together and this is the best way i know how to describe it because again it's, it's such a weirdly complex story there's like so many elements into it but that's essentially it um i gave that four stars i liked it i liked the characters i liked the story um the ending was pretty satisfying for me for the most part uh i'm definitely willing to give marie Lou's other series a chance just to see how i would feel about them because they might actually um be interesting if they're just as good as this one so the next book I read was A Song of Storms and Silence, which is the second book in the uh, A Song of Wraiths and Ruin. And I gave the first book three stars, and I gave the second one three stars. I just didn't really like this duology. It was, like, okay. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't my favorite either. I really didn't like the romance. I thought it was unnecessary, and I felt like if this book had just been about two kids trying to save their um, loved ones, then... I would have been probably liked it a lot better and I, I just hated the romance element because it just didn't really feel like a romance and I didn't feel like it added much to the story at all so it follows these two kids one's a princess and one's a refugee from a neighboring um village or kingdom that's been basically destroyed and so both of them lose someone close to them um, within the span of a, a like a day or like day or two and so in order to get both of their family members back or loved ones back they have to sacrifice um another person so for the princess she has to sacrifice the heart of a king i believe or prince and then for the boy he has to sacrifice the heart of a queen and so um, she creates this competition where, um, she's gonna have men compete for her hand in marriage. That way, um, she can use that as, as a deciding factor of who's going to die. And he jumps in to compete in order to, uh, basically follow through with the plan of killing the queen whatever but the issue is that they do form a connection 
and there's just like other they realize there's other things at play like gods and mystical beings and all that kind of stuff so it all goes downhill very fast um with the second book i just didn't really enjoy the story i just thought it was kind of boring um again the romance was unreal like just didn't make sense to me at all within the story and then i didn't really enjoy the characters much either and the connection that they have just didn't feel believable to me at all it was just so i don't know weird so yeah um i definitely still recommend people to read this because i think i'm just like an outlier like i know so many other people who actually enjoyed this duology so i still recommend it especially because like i think roseanne i think i would still try uh any other books by roseanne brown um just probably not this one <laughs> but yeah so don't take my words to stop you from reading the book i just have issues all right so then i read the next book i read was the assassin's blade by sarah j moss so this year i've been reading through um the throne of glass series because i read the first two books in the crescent city se series um early this year and i absolutely well i love the first one the second one was okay but i decided that i wanted to go ahead and read um sarah j moss's backlist titles uh because it seems like she's about to start connecting all of her all of her worlds <coughs> excuse me <coughs> Um, and so I definitely want to be in the know if she actually starts connecting things together. So that's been what I'm doing. I've actually been pretty successful. I'm almost done with the Throne of Glass series. And then next year I'm planning on starting the, um, Akatar series and then going from there. But with the Assassin's Blade, um, this one was a novella of prequel stories, um, from before Selena was thrown into the prison that she was sent to in the first book. And I thought, I actually liked the stories. I thought they were interesting to see what she was like before she was locked up and then freed and put into the competition and stuff. And um, I think I really, the, the story I enjoyed most was the one with um, the assassins keep in in the desert i thought that was really cool i really liked the like leader of the group and i kind of hope he comes back into play um later on in the series at some point which i think somebody told me he did but i'm not i'm not i don't remember um and then the other stories were cool too i definitely especially now that i've read air of fire <laughs> uh i'm definitely like i feel a lot better um, because before I read Air Fire, after reading the Assassin's Blade, I was so mad because of, like, the big thing that happens at the end of the stories when you find out who sent her, who really set her up to get sent to the prisons and who really set, like, Sam up to basically die, which is not a spoiler because you learn that, like, within the first book. And so I, after Air Fire, I feel much, after reading that, I feel so much better because she actually finally got her revenge. So I'm like, yes finally we can move on from this <laughs> but um i enjoyed it overall i think did i say i think i gave it 3.5 stars but yeah so i'm actually enjoying the throne of glass series a lot more than i realized than i thought it would so that's also pretty fun too and the next book i read was see all stars by kit frick so this was my um buzzword book for june and i gave this three stars this book was okay Honestly, I might bump it down to two now that I'm thinking about it because it was actually kind of bad. Um, it followed this group of girls who used to be best friends and then they weren't. So it's a flashback, flash forward kind of book where you're getting flashbacks of what happened and what led up to them not being friends anymore. And then flash forward to the after effects of whatever happened that led to them not being friends anymore. So this girl is basically like alone she's been ostracized bullied all that kind of stuff in the after effects 
but as you're reading the before chapters, um, realize that in the friend group, there was one girl who was, like, super popular, but she was also very manipulative towards all of them. And so it was to the point where she would make them compete for her attention, the three other girls, and none of them would call her out on it or whatever. So as the story starts, they st I think they're starting high school or they're in high school or I don't know. But the one the main character, she ends up getting a boyfriend halfway through the, the year and the popular girl is very jealous not because she has a boyfriend but because the boyfriend is taking away the main character's attention from her true narcissism is coming out so as the story goes on like she's going back and forth with her friends about this like really narcissistic and manipulative behavior with her with the one girl and then her boyfriend so it gets to the point where her boyfriend starts acting sketchy and she doesn't really think anything of it. She kind of brushes off whatever. Like, she kind of just accepts whatever excuses he's giving her. So, yeah. And then, I'm just going to spoil it because this book is, like, very backlist. I don't think anybody's going to read it. But, so then the, all the big secrets get revealed. The boyfriend is a drug dealer. You find that out. So, that's hella sketchy. So, there's that one. But not only is the boyfriend a drug dealer, he s has been sleeping with the best friend, the narcissist manipulative one, this whole time. And I kid you not, like, the main character, like, finally had a moment where she was like, I'm fucking done. Like, she was like, she broke up with a boyfriend, was like, you're fucking suck, you, you freaking suck. And then she like breaks it off with the best friend the whole friend group she's like this is ridiculous like you are so manipulative to the rest of us and like it's just it's stupid now but then the main girl comes back and she's like i did it for you she's like he's such a gross human being like he's not the best guy for you and i did it to show you that he wasn't the best guy for you which the logic is still not logicing for me y'all so Whatever, and mind you, I probably should have DNF'd this book, but I just kept going because I wanted to get that buzzword challenge done. But anyways, so the best friend was doing all this stuff like, oh, I did this for you, it was for us, it was blah blah blah. So then, the big event. So they're arguing in school about this whole thing. The other two girls are not taking, they're like on, they're not even taking the main girl's side, they're taking the other girl's side, and she's like, okay, you really see, you really don't see how wrong this was, like, the other two girls are like, you're being so selfish, and she's like, how? Like, she slept with my boyfriend, but okay. So, there, she, like, walks away, and she's like, I don't want to talk anymore, and she goes, she's trying to go to class. So, the manipulative girl follows her, and, like, as they're going up the stairs, grabs her, and so the other girl was like, I told you I don't want to talk to you, and, like, like rips her arm out of the hand like the girl's hand or whatever like pulls her arm back and the girl is drunk the the manipulative one is drunk and then she's wearing these like big ass heels and so putting those together she loses her balance and falls down the hit down the stairs and dies so that's the big event the girl dies not by purposeful but by accident but the main girl is ostracized because everybody thinks she did it on purpose, even though the police said it was an accident. And so, that's why she's now, like, a pariah in her school. And then the other two girls just won't talk to her or whatever. So, I don't know. It's just, like, kind of stupid. And then, at the end, she goes to this the gravesite of the girl and she's like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, why are you apologizing? Like... It's just a weird thing, a weird, weird thing. And so now I'm just like, this was a weird ass book. Also, she starts like hallucinating the girl, like in the present chapters. So that was also weird because I was like, I feel like this girl is dead, but okay. So yeah, maybe I will bump this book down to two stars because it was kind of bad. It was pretty, pretty bad. Moving on. So then the last book, for June that I read was Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend. I gave this four stars. Um, the first book I gave three stars because I wasn't sure if I liked this story, but once we got into this one, I actually liked 
it a lot more um, within this one so she's joined the wondrous society where she's like in the initiation processes or whatever so she gets to start going to the school so I really liked the fact that she um, got to like start making a group of friends really getting to know, uh, know other kids and really getting to know the world that she's been placed into um, the annoying part was just like the prejudice that a lot of the teachers had against her about what she was uh, which I wish there were times where I'm like you should just slap him and I'm like she can't because she's a child but at the same time I'm like I wish somebody would just slap him because this is ridiculous so but yeah I really liked that I like the world it's very interesting um, I enjoyed the like silliness of certain things too which is cool so in case you don't know what this series is about the series follows Morgan Crow who has been um who was born on like a very terrible day to be born on for a child and so if you're born on that day on I think you were supposed to die between before your 12th birthday or on your 12th birthday or something so on her 12th birth birthday this man comes in and is like oh if you come with me to this place you won't die so she decides okay my family sucks I don't want to die so I'm gonna go with you to this place and she goes there and it's uh like a really magically filled place and so in order for her to stay she has to join the society called the wondrous society and she has to basically go through their initiation and go through the trials and all this kind of stuff um but it's really really cool she lives in like this hotel that's very magical and has a changing chandelier and rooms and all that kind of stuff it's like a really fun story so um I'm glad that I really enjoyed the sequel, and I'm definitely going to pick up the third book, which I have already, and I think there's another book coming out soon, too, so I'm definitely intrigued to see where this series goes, especially because there's also, like, this big bad enemy, too, that they're, like, weary of, so that's another thing. Alright, moving on to July. So, in July, I read, I read five books. So, the first book I read was, and... Every morning, the way home gets longer and longer. Y'all, this is my first Frederick Bachman book, and it was pretty short, but it was so good. I gave this five stars. So, I remember Monet telling me last year that she read the story and listened to the audiobook, and she, like, sobbed, but she thought it was so good. And then I think she got, like, two other people to read it, um, and, but I, like, wasn't interested at the time. But one day I was cleaning, and I really needed a short book to listen to as I was cleaning. So I went ahead and just snagged this from my library because it was available. And, um, started listening as I cleaned. And I was good the whole time in the story. Like, I was like, wow, this is, like, really interesting. I really like the writing and the characterization. But, like, I was like, I'm not gonna sob. It's fine. And then I got to the la the very, very end. And it ended, and I just sat down and I just started sobbing so hard because it just like hit me in such a way that I was not expecting. So this story follows this old man who is going through Alzheimer's. And so he is dealing with the fact that like he's sick, he's not remembering things as he was, um, he's kind of stuck in his head a lot of the times, and he's finding it harder and harder to come home. And so it follows him and then his relationship with his grandson, who he um, loves and cherishes, and how that's changing too because his grandson has to watch him go through this, and um, which is hard. But then also like his, his reflecting back on like his relationship with his son as well because like even in the book it says like he may not have been the greatest father but he was a really great grandfather so yeah it was just so good like y'all just just read it go in and just listen because it's just be it's like a really beautiful story honestly all right next book i got was um queen of the tailing by erica johansson i think i gave this four stars um this follows a girl named Kelsey, Princess Kelsey, who on her 19th birthday is um, supposed to leave where she's been hidden and go take over her mother's kingdom, um, essentially. And so the thing is, as she's been hidden away, she doesn't know anything about her mother. She doesn't know anything about her kingdom. Um, she's basically just been kept in the dark. 
And so as she's like leaving to go to this new kingdom to be their new queen, she has to figure out what's happening, who who everybody is, what's how she's supposed to do this, like while also dealing with a big bad enemy next door. And I thought the series was super, or I thought this book was super good. I was definitely intrigued enough to continue the series. Um, I really enjoyed that she worked her way into building trust with her people and her guards. And it was cool because even at one point she really started to find confidence in herself. And she like straight up told her guards, she was like, you either need to trust me or you need to get out. Because at this point, she's like, my life is at stake. So figure it out. And I really liked that she like, put it to them and was like, listen, you gotta figure this shit out. I enjoyed that a lot. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading the other, I think two books, I think three, two or three books. So next is, I read The Bromance Cl Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. I gave this one star. I did not like this book. I thought it was annoying. I thought it was stupid. And <laughs> it just was bad to me. So it follows this lady, well, it follows this guy and his wife. So, he's like a star baseball player, and they met when they were younger, and like, had got married, and well, they got knocked up, and then got married super quickly, and so they've been like married like 10 years now at this point. So he says one day, one night he comes home, and his wife tells him she wants a divorce, and he's like a wreck, because he doesn't want to split up from her, like he loves her, all this kind of stuff. Um... And so him and his buddies, well, his buddies basically formed a book club to read women's fiction or women's romance to just to figure out how to woo their women or whatever. And so he joins and it, it, the story just becomes annoying at that point because he's actually trying, like he's trying to win her back. He's trying to treat her how she says she wants to be treated. He's trying to... Um, show her how much he loves her and she's just not about it and that's like where I was getting annoyed because I was like you literally just sprung on him that you want a divorce because you don't feel like he pays enough attention and then now that he is he's trying you're still not open to it and it was just annoying because the majority of the book was him doing all the work and so I I'm the person where I have like a relationship is 50 50 like in regards to just putting in like work like communication and whatever else you need to make your relationship work I really think it's 50 50 and so it just did not feel like she was trying at all either and so I know the point of it was like her like she she was kind of giving up but it just was like annoying because you agreed to a trial period so you should try <sighs> but anyways moving on so I just yeah, that's just kind of how I feel, and this book has been long enough, out, out long enough that I feel like I can spoil it a little bit, but, like, even when she finds out about the book club, like, she's so mad, and I'm just like, your husband is literally reading books he could care less about so he could understand how to really respect you as a woman. So I don't understand why you're mad. And so I appreciated the fact that he finally, like, kind of called her out on it, or it was something like he was like, I can't love you until you fix the issues that you have in regards to love. And so I liked that, like, he finally called her out on that because it really was not, she was not, like, letting him in. And it was just, it was just bothering me. So I don't think I'm going to continue with those books. The last book in July that I read was Only a Monster by Vanessa Lynn. I gave this four stars. It was looking like a three-star book until they last, until the very end, and then it became a four-star book because the ending was pretty solid. So, um, this follows a girl who lives in a family of monsters. So, they have special abilities that they can use to, um, do whatever. But the thing is, they take lives, they take, they, they gain, uh, life or life energy or whatever from taking time away from humans. Um, and they don't drain them completely, but they just, like, do, like, a little touch and they take a few years or whatever off their, like, I guess, lives. So this girl finds out that she is a part of this type of family, and then her family gets annihilated, and she has to pair up with this other boy from a na from a like a an enemy family in order to go back and save her family. And that's all I really want to say about this, because there's really nothing much else to add. But it was an interesting journey and story. Um, there's also like this boy trying to kill everybody so like they're also trying to figure that out um 
I thought that the story was unique. The characters was u were unique, so I enjoyed that. At first, I was just kind of like, this is kind of boring. But then by towards the end, it really did start to pick up. And again, the ending was really what gave what bumped it up to an extra star because it was such a surprise ending. Like, I wasn't expecting the choices that were made to be made. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to reading the sequel next year and seeing what's going to happen next because, I don't know, it just really ended on a weird, weird note. So then, in August, I read four books. So the first book I read was The Beach Trap by Ali Brady. I gave this two stars. I thought it was okay. Maybe three stars. I gave it three stars. I thought it was okay. It's about these two sisters who are, like, not really sisters um, in the, like, familial sense because they're, one of them came from a, their dad's affair. And so um, they accidentally met, like, as children at a random summer camp and realized that like they had like they realized who each other were and then from there just kind of went downhill so like you have the one sister that the dad actually lived with and then the other sister that the dad abandoned so when he dies he leaves them both this beach house so the one sister he abandoned wants to sell it and the other sister wants to keep it both because they need money so they decide to at least fix up the house and then see what they can do about um, selling it. I think the one sister wants to buy the house from the other sister, or whatever. So, as they're doing that, um, they start to really hash out their issues with each other, and just their father, who is, like, the big, big issue in the room. Um, and then as they do that, they kind of also meet, like, romantic interests and stuff like that. The one sister he lived with, I did not like her. I thought she was very rude and very mean, and I feel like the things that she said and did were not called out enough in the story so that's why I only got three stars um but the other sister I actually really liked and I liked the romance that she had because I thought it was very cute and authentic and very um sincere so that's kind of all I have to say it's like a small like summer beach read if you wanted to take that um with a little bit of seriousness in regards to the sisters and their dad so that's that the next book I read was Meth Mexican Gothic which I gave four stars. Um, this was the second Silvio Moreno Garcia book I read this year, and I really, really liked it. It was really freaking creepy halfway through the story, but I really, really did like it. Um, it follows this girl who finds out that her cousin is like sick, and so she is sent to go stay with her cousin and his new and her new um, husband and his family to take care of her and figure out what's going on. And then she gets there and she realizes this, there's this like very intense, weird plot happening with the within the family there's some weird secrets some weird vibes and she kind of decides to figure out what's happening so that way she can save her cousin and from there it just gets dark and twisty and very very gross half the time but I really enjoyed this I thought I think some Silvio Mariano Garcia does a really good job of writing characters with such intense flaws it's like like, you really get strong, visceral reactions from her characters. At least I have so far. And I just really enjoy that. Um, and she does a good job of mixing, like, this idea of, like, real world with some type of magical element. I think she does a really good job of that, too. And so that's why I'm definitely going to read the rest of her books, just to see how I feel about them. Um because I think I could enjoy them. I feel like if I read a third book by her and I really like it, then she's probably just going to be a favorite author from now on. Alright, and then next I read Air of Fire by Sarah J. Moss. Again, continuing on with my Throne of Glass read. I gave this one um, four stars. I think this was my one of my favorites out of the series so far. I really liked that Selena met Rowan. I like Rowan. I like him a lot. <laughs> He's like my new favorite in the series. Hey, Kale. I think him and Dorian are just like some of the most boring characters but Kale makes me just hate him because it, it, the choices he's made so far are just really crappy um but I like that um Selena is finally embracing who she really is and finally deciding to fight back against everybody that took something from her within this series so that's all I'm gonna say about that because it's the, it is like the fourth book and I don't want to spoil and then the last book I read was Malice by Heather Walter which I gave two stars I did not like this book it was, okay, I liked the fantastical elements of the story, and if it ju had just been about her as a mage without the romance, I would have liked it a lot more. But 
yeah. Um, I didn't like the romance at all. I thought it was weird. Hi, friends! Okay, so my camera kind of cut off, and then life happened a little bit in between filming these two scenes. But I'm back, so we're going to continue on with this end-of-year wrap-up, essentially. So the last book I was talking about was Malice. So that one, I was saying I didn't really like the romance. I didn't really enjoy Aurora. I just thought she was kind of annoying. Like, I really wish they had put um, Malice with somebody else. <laughs> Definitely not going to read the second book. Alright, so those were all the books I read in August. So moving on to September, I read four books. Um, one of them was one of my most anticipated reads of the year, and it was kind of disappointing. So, starting with the first book I read, which was <laughs> Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead uh, by El Casamin Mano. This is the second book to the Finley Donovan, like, mystery, cozy mystery series. Um, it essentially follows this, uh, single mother slash author who is kind of down in the dumps. She's just late on her deadline. She, uh, is struggling to pay the bills, take care of her kids. She has a nanny that's been very helpful, but she can barely afford the nanny. And her ex-husband is just very stupid. So, in the series, she gets caught up <laughs> in, uh, some very tricky, tricky situations. And in ensues is a lot of mystery, a lot of sleuthing, and a lot of hilarity. So I don't want to tell this plot of this one. Well, I guess I can. So it kind of ties in from the first one. So in the first one, she's actually mistaken as a hit woman. And is <laughs> uh, given a job to kill this random lady's husband. And so she's struggling because, one, it's a lot of money, but also she's like, I'm definitely not going to go kill people. So she's trying to figure out how to let this lady know and give her back the money. But as she tries to figure this out, she gets, like, pulled deeper and deeper into this, like, black market world or whatever. So it continues in this story where she figures out that someone is trying to kill her ex-husband. So now she has to go on this journey of an adventure of trying to figure out who did it, why they want him dead and go from there. It's actually really, really funny, especially when you find out who put the hit out on him. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, I gave this four stars. I'm definitely looking forward to the third one that's coming out next year. And yeah, if you want like a funny, cozy, like mystery where like half the stuff that's happening, you're just, she like is accidental. She doesn't even mean to do it. I, I highly recommend this book and the other book as well. Alright, so the next book I read was A Broken Blade by Melissa Blair. This is the first book in the Halfling series saga. So I was waiting for this book to come out, and I actually really, really enjoyed it. So this takes place in a world where the human king, years ago, he started a war with the Fae, and he, like, wiped them out, essentially, or so they think, or so they, they say. And all that's left are, like, halflings, which are half Fae, half human I believe or half elf I'm not I don't remember all the things but um those they became ba they become basically the slaves of the kingdom um and so one elf one halfling in particular Kira she is basically taken in as the king's blade so his top assassin so all the little halfling girls are basically sent to this like island where they um have to train to become assassins so she has been living this life of just, like, depression. She's an alcoholic. She's down on her dumps. I think I re that's why I really like the series, the story, because she's, like, not, like... Like, she's the best of the best when it comes to assass being an assassin, but being, like, a person, she's, like, down. She's in the dumps. She's in the trenches. She's, she's just not there. And so when you start the series, she's literally, like, a functioning alcoholic. And so... As the series goes on, she's trying to find the man that has been um, ruining the king's various plots. And along the way, she kind of readjusts her values and realizes that maybe she can um, change the kingdom and get rid of the king, essentially. 
So, I don't know. It's, like, really good, though. Like, the romance is interesting. The romance is, like, slow burn because it's really enemies to lovers. But, like, enemies to, like, toleration in this book for right now. And, uh, she... You really get to see, um like, a lot of the background information of just, like, how they got here, how she got here. There's, like, a big mystery about her identity as well. Yeah. So, I just really enjoyed it. I liked the story. I liked the characters. Um, there are some fun characters in this as well. I liked her devotion. So, like, the fact that she hates the king. Like, she definitely is not devoted to, to that man, but she is devoted to her halflings and helping them and saving them. And so, at first, it really doesn't look like it, but as the book goes on, you really realize that she's done a lot to uh, make sure that the halflings are safe and secure. So, yeah, I definitely highly recommend this um, if you're looking for a good, like, slow burn fantasy romance, but also just a good fantasy assassin story. Top tier. Next, I did a reread of All of His Villains um, by Christine Lynn Herman and Amanda Foody because I also then read All of Our Demise. <laughs> so, I gave this reread five, four stars? Yeah. Um, still just as good. Uh, still enjoyed it for the most part, but this new book, I gave three stars. This was not it. This was not the ending I wanted. This is not the ending I cared for. I wanted more. I don't know. I just wanted more of what the first book was giving. This just became, I don't know, maybe too long. Uh, I think I wanted more death. And I hate to say that about the bunch of kids, but I, at, out of the whole story, there's only, like, three people that die. I would have preferred maybe, like, a couple more. <laughs> uh, I thought the characters were good in the first book, but I feel like they just changed a lot in this book. And maybe that's the point, I don't know, but they didn't really change how I wanted or how I expected. And even one character that got roped into the story, I just didn't feel that was necessary. But maybe that's me. So yeah, this was kind of a disappointment, so... Sad story. So next, October, I read... Five books. So the first book I read was The Ivory Key by uh, Akshaya Rahman. Um, I, this was a buddy read between me, Cell, and Chanel. Um, a loose buddy read because... I think we finished all at different times, but I gave this one four stars. I actually uh, really like the series. This is about four siblings who um, are the children of the late, I think it's, is it Maharani? It's the late queen. And so the oldest daughter um, assumes the position of Maharani, and then the other three, like a lot of things happen, and they end up all basically... Um, being divided and separated and so the story is about how in their kingdom magic is dying and so it's left up to um, Vera to figure out how to save her kingdom as the new Maharani because she's basically been left with this destitute place and so she and her four and her three siblings have to go on this journey to find this key in order to um in order to bring magic back or so they hope or find this lost um like lost tunnel of magic or something like that but the story is really good i liked the whole seeing the, the sibling dynamics you get each of their povs so i really enjoyed that because you really get to see why each of them like left and why each of them just like feel so divided from their family and but you also get to see them kind of not grow closer because it take, it's going to take a lot for them to get back to where they were. But at least remember why they loved each other in the first place and why they like really worked well together. And when I saw you at the end, there was like a big reveal betrayal. That's why I gave it four stars because I was like not expecting that because this character was with them all the whole time. He was like in it to win it. And then he was like psych. And I was like, oh god. So I'm definitely intrigued to read the second book. Alright, so the next book I read, which was The Crow Rider by K Kaylin Josephson. So I finished the Storm Crow duology. So I'm really excited about that because that was a goal of mine. I give this one three stars. So this continues from the 
first book, um, which I don't want to spoil it because this is the second last book, so I'm just going to tell you what the series is about in general. So the series follows a girl whose kingdom is attacked and her mother is killed and so her sister is left to be queen and she is left to be princess. But at, when her kingdom was, atta was attacked, they killed all their magical crows that really helped their society thrive. And so in order to keep the other kingdom from attacking again, her sister has to marry um, Thea off to that the prince of that kingdom. And from there, she has to basically figure out how to save her people from within the enemy kingdom. I thought this was pretty a pretty good duology. It was interesting. I didn't really like the... Um, the romance had me hesitant because I was like, mm, this is a lot. Um, especially in the second book, I felt like it did a weird 180 that I was not expecting. And that's okay, but it was just a little weird. Um, I liked the dynamic of her and the one crow. Her and her crow. It was really um, cute and funny. He was very dramatic, so I really enjoyed that. But I liked the storyline of, like, really her striving through her loss and her grief and mental health, which is a big factor in this story. Like, she really does suffer from depression. And so I really enjoyed that as well because you really get to see her break through that and grow and um, learn to be the princess that her kingdom needs her to be. Alright, next I read Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. This I gave 3.5 stars. It was okay. It was a very stark, dark story. I didn't realize how dark Peter Pan originally was because I've only ever seen the Disney version so it was definitely really interesting there really wasn't much that I didn't know about this like that didn't really that I didn't already know in the story but there were just like a few different things that I was like that's new that's dark okay so it was interesting but I am glad I read it because I'm definitely trying to read more classics and I definitely bought more classics so I need to read them but super super glad that I was able to get to this also this is such a pretty book I'm not going to tell you the synopsis because you guys hopefully know what Peter Pan is about. If not, it's about um, a magical boy that never grows up and he takes children to his island and they become lost children. And then he fights pirates. Next, I have A Curse of Blood and Stone by K.A. Tucker. I gave this three stars. I loved this first book. It was so good. Five stars. Blah, blah, blah. This one definitely was a filler book because they did nothing this entire book and it was very frustrating because it didn't need to be this long if you were going to just do nothing so like the majority of the book was them traveling which isn't bad if you're traveling and doing things but you're just traveling you're not even fighting people really like i think there were maybe one or two battles but there was no new information revealed no new like progress made in the problem or dilemma that's going on right now it was just traveling and so that's that I guess um I just thought that it was a waste it truly was so three stars all right so November I read three books and the first book I read was War Storm by Victoria Aveyard, which means I finished the Red Queen series, which is a goal of mine this year. So congrats to me because I'm finally done with the series and I can get rid of it. <laughs> so I gave this, I guess I gave this three stars because it was just like an okay ending. It didn't excite me, but it also didn't like make me hate it. It was just okay, just like this entire series. Um, I am so glad I'm done. <laughs> I'm literally gonna get rid of these books because they were the bane of my existence, honestly. The first book slapped, but the rest of the series just went downhill from there for me, so yeah. Um, I'm not gonna spoil it because obviously this is the last book, but if you don't know, this follows um, a girl named Mare who is a, lives in a world where the, the society is divided between red blood and silver blood, and silver bloods have special abilities and red bloods don't so they're the slaves of the world basically and until it is revealed that mare as a red blood has a special ability and that's when everything changes and a revolution really just starts to go and there's a love triangle and psychotic princes and just all the things but yeah 
So I just I I say read the first book and then just don't read the rest of the books, the rest of the series. But that's just me. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, super super glad I finished this. I did, will say that I did complete a lot of my goals this year. I think so, at least reading wise. So we're happy with that. Next, I read um, Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I gave this one four stars. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this. Um, but I actually really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the Russian folklore that took place and all the little um, beings and fairy tales that were thrown into the story. I thought those were so intriguing. I really enjoyed um, Vasilisa, who is a little girl when you start out the series and then you watch her grow. I really enjoyed her because I liked that she was just who she was. Like, she never really changed who she was. She never let people change who she was. She just stayed the same and really just embraced her, her identity and what she was meant to do and her special ability of seeing all of these little creatures and people and continuing to believe in them no matter what. Um, this follows that little girl, Vasilisa, as she discovers that she is meant to save the world, and she's supposed to marry, I think, the Winter King of some sort, of some kind, I think, and she, um, as the, like, this really just follows her life. So it just starts when she's younger, when she's born, before she's born, up to, I think, the age of, like, 15, 14, 15, when she's, like, almost an adult. And it's just a slow trickle of that. Um, and then I think the rest of the series just follows her viewpoint still. But I'm... Really looking forward to reading the rest of the books because I definitely want to see what happens next. I liked that this also is kind of historically accurate too, where it talks about the uh, spread of Catholicism during this time as well, and how it's it was spreading throughout Russia. And so, because it was spreading, it was spread through fear, and people because people started believing in them. In the story, the fairy tales and the little fo folklore creatures they start to disappear because people stop believing in them. So I really liked that. Uh, conversation or a theme or something or whatever that's being like told as well so yeah it was just really, really intriguing it's a good definitely atmospheric read to read in winter I know we're still we're still in winter so you can still read it but I think it really fits the the, the vibes in the last book I read so I, I've been in a theme of reading Monet's favorite books so uh The Bear and the Nightingale and then the next one I read was Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor I gave this four stars I, when I tell you I didn't know what this book was about, I did not know what this was bo book was about, ever. Like, I haven't been spoiled, I haven't learned anything, did no synopsis. So, when Monet was like, read this, like, it's my favorite, and I was like, you know what, I'll just pick it up. And I did, and then halfway through, she was like, it's a tragedy, and I was like, I gotta stop listening to you. So, yeah. But, it was really good regardless of the tragedy. <laughs> um, it follows a guy named Laszlo Strange who is an orphan and he doesn't really know where he comes from or who his parents are, blah, blah, blah. And he ends up working at the library, like the great library of his town or whatever. But when he was younger, there was a priest or whatever his name, a priest who would tell him the stories of Weep. And Weep is not the original city's name, but Lazo discovered... Um, like, right after he heard that story, that the name of the actual city was gone from his memory, and he couldn't uh, remember it. So that's the only name that would pop up, Weep. And so it made him really sad, and he didn't want to forget about the, the city. So he made it a point to put all of his research into Weep, and what it was, and who lived there, and all that kind of stuff. So then, as, when he's older, he's working in this library, and then a representative from Weep comes, and it's like, we need your best scholars, best whatever, to help rebuild our city, and stuff like that, and solve our problem. So, Laszlo magically gets to go on the trip. So, this begins his journey to Weep, and the journey of solving the problem that, like, Weep is having in general. I know that was very bad, but I just want y'all to go in without knowing. I feel like everybody's read this before already, besides me, so I could just be, I'm just late. But anyways, um... I really enjoyed Laszlo. Like, he's literally this weak guy. He's not the hero of the story. He's not the, like, he does not give main character vibes. But I think that's what I like about him because he's so unsuspecting that people just like him. And it's amazing. And so, um, 
I really enjoyed learning about him and his perspective and everything like that. And then you get another perspective, but I don't want to spoil who it is. But you really, I really enjoyed that perspective too because she's sweet and I am sad. <laughs> but um, I liked following his journey into to weep because you see his excitement and his like fulfillment. Like this is literally a fulfilling his dream of seeing weep, getting to experience weep, all that kind of stuff. Um, and he really starts to fit in and he feels like he belongs for the first time, which is emotional. But as you get further into the story, you realize that there's more to this city, more to this world than you than you thought. So I really liked that aspect too. Alright, it is me again. My camera died again. So I'm back to finish this video because I want to get it done. So anyways, uh, we have four more books to talk about that I have read in December. So this is my like end of year, end of year. So. The first book I read was A Proposal They Can't Ref Refuse by Natalie Kana. This is a kind of, it's so it's not an enemies to lovers. It's more of like a childhood friends who grew apart to lovers, essentially. And so the story is about this girl named Camila and um, a guy named Liam. And their grandfathers are like besties. And they've been friends for so long that they invested in like this building together where they each own their like separate family businesses um, and so Camila's family owns a Puerto Rican restaurant and Liam and his grandfather run an Irish uh, whiskey distillery I believe and so uh, these two like are trying to take over their their respective businesses they like want to put their own mark on it make it their own um, but the catch is their grandfathers give them an ultimatum. If these two get married, <laughs> or at least engaged, then they will allow them to keep the businesses and, like, do their own changes and stuff to them. So from there is a story of just, like, shenanigans and <laughs> funny moments and sweet moments. I thought the story was cute overall. I thought it was really nice seeing how like they went from really not talking at all to becoming like really close again like rebuilding their friendship and relationship overall the grandfathers were really funny i thought they were super duper cute um i thought it was kind of twisted that they literally gave them an ultimatum to get married or lose their businesses and stuff but i guess old people i don't know um but overall, I thought this was pretty cute. I believe I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. So I definitely do recommend this if you're looking for a nice romance. Especially about, like, food. Alright, so the next book I read was another Monet recommendation. And that was The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. I gave this one 4 stars. I thought it was pretty good. I really wasn't sure what this was about. I really wasn't sure what to expect from this. So I did not have high expectations or just a lot of expectations in general so this takes place in a world where magic exists and it follows a girl named esta who has been raised from a young age to help this man this old man with his various plots of stealing um different artifacts from different points in time to bring back to current day because um they the city that they live in like manhattan and manhattan is closed off by this border of magic and anyone who has magic cannot cross it and or else they will lose their magic and die and so the people who put this border in place was this like organization called the order which is like people who want to steal magic to use it for themselves essentially and so she believes that she's been going back and stealing these artifacts to help essentially um stop the order and get rid of that border magic wall thing so her final mission um is being sent to the 1920s and her main goal is to stop the magician from ruining this heist that takes place um, during that time. And so from there, it's um, the whole thing of like mystery, intrigue, who did it, like can you really trust these people. It's really you going through this book and you're like following Esta's point of view and you're just like, can she trust these people? 
should she trust these people? Like, should she trust the magician? Is he really who he says he is or is he somebody else? It's just like a whole back and forth, but I enjoyed it for the most part. Especially the ending. The ending was wild because I was like, what is happening? Who can I trust? You, I kind of guessed who the, like, betrayer was, but there were certain elements that I still was shocked by because I wasn't expecting them to happen. So I'm definitely looking forward to picking up the second book and see what happens next because Miss Maxwell definitely intrigued me with this one. Hey, right, the next I read Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher. I believe I gave this one four or five stars. I can't really remember right now. But I thought this was a fun, interesting read. I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. But I actually found it quite cozy in a weird way. So it follows a girl named Mara, who is the daughter of the queen. She's the princess of this very tiny, tiny coastal kingdom. And her two older sisters have been married off to one of the bordering kingdoms, to the same king. And so her first sister dies, and she has to deal with the grief of that. But then her second sister, um, she learns, is actually being abused the same way the first sister was. And from there, so she originally was sent to a convent when she was younger. She's not an officially a nun, but she's lived there long enough that she feels like a nun. So she takes it upon herself to go and find magic so she can kill this king that is basically not treating her sister correctly. And from there, it's a whole ragtag adventure. It's kind of funny in ways because she like picks up a, like a we ragtag group of people to tag along with her to help so there is a I think she's a, a dust wife who has a chicken that is possessed by a demon um a man who they bought from the like elven market and then a fairy godmother who actually specializes in curses but refuses to accept that she specializes in curses <laughs> so it's it's kind of funny like they're they're really a funny group of of characters and I thoroughly enjoyed this story so much and so they all like make it a point to help her and it's just like a whole thing but I I was expecting this to be a lot scarier because people were saying it's a horror and while it has its moments it's actually just more like I don't even know how to describe it like I would describe it as like maybe a cozy fantasy slash horror or cozy dark fantasy I have no idea but it's quite hilarious at times, and I am definitely going to be checking out Tinking Fisher's other books if they're just as good as this one. So I highly recommend if you're looking for a good, like, I don't know, I, just, I, just, I hate to describe it as cozy because I, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just cozy. Like, I was reading it, and I was like, you know what, this is, like, a comfortable read. Like, it's not too much, but it's, like, just enough. I don't know if that makes sense. But anyways, definitely recommend this. Go ahead and check it out. Alrighty, and the last book I read for December was Love Light Farms by B.K. Borison. This is the first book in her, like, I guess companion novels of these. There's, like, two more, I think, in the same world. Um, but this one was really, really cute. So it's a friends to lovers. Stella owns a uh, Christmas tree farm. And she is not it's not going well it's not uh performing as well as she hoped so she decides to join this contest in order to win the prize money so she can um keep her farm afloat again but when she entered the contest she lied she said that she runs it with her boyfriend plot twist is she doesn't have a boyfriend but she does have a best friend of 12 years, Luca, and so she asks him to pretend to be her boyfriend. And from there, they kind of slip into more. I, When I tell you I loved this story, I give it five stars. I found this story very refreshing and just comfortable. I don't know how else to describe it. So, like, 
the relationship between Luca and Stella is like adorable to me. Their friendship was like solid. And so the way they just kind of slid from friends to lovers without like a hitch was honestly amazing to me I like loved it so much because they had known each other for 12 years so they were just like well like it was just kind of an easy slide for them to transition into dating or fake dating whatever because they already knew so much about each other and they everything they had been doing already they just like kept it going as a couple so it was just really cute and I really loved their moments together I loved the communication between each other because even when Stella would get insecure about whatever was happening in this in their relationship, um, Luca would immediately pause and have a conversation about it with her, or she would pause and like have a clarification moment with him. And so I really loved that it's because I feel like a lot of friends to lovers, there's sometimes that miscommunication trope, or sometimes they like miscommunicate with each other. And so I really enjoyed the fact that that didn't happen that much in this. Like literally. Um, there would be moments where she'll be like, oh, is he just here because he want he has to be? And then she'll say something and then he would, like, he'll be like, pause. And then he'll, like, clarify or he'll be like, he'll ask her questions about what she's thinking and then, like, simplify it for her. So I just really, really loved that. I also loved, so that this, this takes place in a small town. I really loved the people in the small town. They were so sweet to each other. Um, the fact that they like made sure to take care of each other and check in on each other i really loved especially when they found out about her contest so they knew the lady was coming in around like whatever day so the town made a point to create a sign-up sheet so that they would all be at stella's farm at whatever time while the lady was there so it looked like stella actually had customers even though she does but it looked like she would have a full farm and not just like nobody there and i just thought that was so cute because like that's such dedication to just taking care of your neighbors and your friends and stuff and i just super duper love that um i'm definitely looking forward to checking out the other two books because i think bk borison um did a really cute job with this and i hope that follows through within the next two uh, stories and I believe the next two follow like two characters that you meet in this book as well so you're kind of already established who they are in this one when you move on to the next two. Alrighty <laughs> so that's that so that was my end of year wrap up these are all the books I read from June to December of 2020 to 2022 <laughs> so I am super thankful if you've stayed this long so sorry that this was so long i will try not to get behind on my wrap-ups ever again um i am so excited to see y'all in the new year with whatever i end up reading then hopefully something good but uh if you like the video please like it down below if you have any comments questions concerns leave all that in the comment section and if you want to see more videos from me please hit that subscribe button you are also buyers in a world full of links.